hello everyone and welcome to another youtube video and uh, in today's video we are going to be talking about the test for normality now having a normally distributed data is actually the bedrock of parametric statistical tests such as the z test and uh, the anova just to mention a few the normality assumption is also needed for us to be able to perform the piercings correlation on two numerical variables so this video is all about how to test for normality that is if i have a single variable and it has its data point how can i use um, a test to see if the data set is actually normally distributed or not so from the visual standpoint a normally distributed data is actually a bell curve and it is a uh, very symmetric and from the mathematical standpoint it is actually uh, a data set that has the mean equals to the median which is actually in turns equals to the mode so one of the easiest way and the most basic way to see if a data set is normally distributed or not is um you know you can plot the histogram for that data since it is actually a numerical data or you can actually use a dot plot for it and if you plot an histogram you'll be able to see the distribution of the data set but most times that is actually not enough you actually have to like perform actual tests to see if the data set is actually normally distributed or not so basically we have a lot of statistical tests that we can actually use to test for normality uh, but we are going to be talking about just two right here and that is the shapiro wilk test and the como groves smirnoff test i hope i'm pronouncing that right i think it is como gorov smirnoff test okay so because those are the two tests i'll be using spss to actually work on so we have our data set right here we have a total of 27 variables and most of the variables are actually numerical in nature and they are also on the interval scale as you can see we have most of them being on the interval scale right here we also have a couple of categorical variables right here though like this down to this so let's try to perform uh, the test for normality on the simplest basis let's try to use the visualization so we can just come to graph go to chart builder and then i come straight down to the histogram and i just drag this right here so i'm going to pick the variable i'm actually i'm actually interested in rather so i can actually just pick uh, the car length then i click on ok and it actually gives me the histogram of this variable which is uh, the car length okay right here at the top right corner you can see the value of the mean the standard deviation the size of the data set and taking a look at this you can see that our data set is not normally distributed based on the histogram in fact you might want to have like a normal curve you know infused on this histogram you can actually do that by coming right here uh, you can come to analyze uh, descriptive statistics frequency we look for car lens we drag it right there then we come to the plot okay or the chart rather and then you click on histogram and then you say show normal curve on histogram and this time uh spss is going to like uh infuse a normal curve on your histogram so that you can see how normally distributed your data set is or not okay so we click on we click that we click on continue and we click on ok and it runs the code give us some frequencies which we don't really need then this is the histogram and uh, as you can see we have a normal curve right here now these two visuals are not really enough for us to still conclude that um our test our variable rather in this case is actually a normally distributed one or not so to perform the actual test for normality we are going to come to analyze okay then we'll come to descriptive statistics then we'll come down to explore it bring out this dialog of all the variables we have and then you can come back to car length you drop that in the dependent list then we'll come to statistics uh, you can obviously construct a confidence interval for the mean of the you know the variable which maybe needed a bit then you can also click for the percentiles the outliers you know look let's just click for outliers a bit and then um, percentiles maybe uh the plots then you can see we can also have the histogram right here so you can click on the histogram if you need it and then the normality plot with test so this is what we actually need so you click on that so it's going to like perform the normality test and it's also going to like give you some plots so we click on continue you know and then uh it's going to display both statistics and plots and then we click on okay 
it runs the code you know it gives us the case processing summary of the data set we have everything is valid no missing values you know it gives us the descriptive we have the mean we have the five percent trimmed mean median variance and all of those stuffs okay we also have the percentiles we have the extreme values these are just basic description of the data set and this is where things get interesting in the test for normality okay so you can see that we have the como growth spin of test and we also have the sharpie review test so for us to appreciate this we need to know that there's actually a null and alternative hypothesis so for either of the tests either the como growth or the como growth rather or the sharpie review test the null hypothesis is that the data set is actually normally distributed or we can say there is no sufficient evidence for us to conclude that the data set is not normally distributed and the alternative is that the data set is not normally distributed now the decision rule is that if the p-value is actually greater than your level of significance then you are actually going to fail to reject the null hypothesis and if the p-value is lesser than the level of significance they are definitely going to reject the null hypothesis so let us start with the komogorov spin of test we can see that our p-value which in this case is our sig the significance is actually lesser than 0 0.001 that is we have a very small p-value close to zero and if you compare this p-value right here to the alpha level of let's say five percent or one percent we can see that our p-value is definitely lesser than 0 0.01 or 0 0.05 which simply make us conclude that uh from the komogorov spin-off test our data set is not normally distributed let's come to the shapiro rig test we can see that the shapiro rig test is actually 0 0.010 so um that is the p-value from the shapiro rig test so if you are using a five percent level of significance okay now we can see that 0 0.010 is actually uh, lesser than 0. 0.05 and 0 0.010 is still lesser than or equals to 0 0.01 which is the one percent level of significance so definitely this p-value is also lesser than our level of significance okay so that simply means that from the shapiro rig test there is no enough evidence to say that our data set is normally distributed so definitely both tests actually have the same conclusion that is the data set is not normally distributed so that is that about that you can also see the histogram right here the uh, it plots the histogram for us we can see the stem uh, and leaf plots then we can also see the normal qq plot so basically this is actually a plot that we used to see if our data set is actually normally distributed so we have the expected normal and we have the observed value if our data set is actually normally distributed so this dotted line is supposed to be aligning with this uh perfect straight line and um you know but as you can see our our dotted line rather is not really aligning it's kind of having this uh zigzag if i can use that word shape or uh stuff and it's also have um you know it have this uh box plot for us and then that is all we need to know about the test for normality if you learned something new from this video and you actually really enjoyed this video i would really appreciate if you can give this video a thumbs up and also subscribe to this youtube channel thanks for making it to the end of this video and we'll see you in the next one bye for now